Slight technical delay there, my apologies. Um, good evening, councillors. A select group today. I think we've gone for quality rather than quantity. Um, just to remind members um, that this meeting, which is the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee, is being recorded and will be available to view on YouTube. I think you'll have to take your place in the queue to watch that. Uh, we have received um, a number of apologies. We have received apologies from uh, Councillor Thomas J, Tina Clements, Daniel Maycock and Danny Cook. Are there any other apologies? Well, it's just about the whole committee, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Okay, you're here, yes, and your commitment is noted. Um, the minutes of the previous meeting held on the 11th of July 2023 are here for approval. Does everybody approve? Happy, happy, happy to second it. Thank you. Mover and a second are all in favour? Thank you very much. Moving as swiftly on, are there any declarations of interest to be declared? Thank you. No declarations. Item four is update from the chair. Just the one item from me. Um, at our meeting on the 11th of July 2023, uh, we endorsed the armed covenant, armed forces covenant item. And it was noted at the meeting that the portfolio holder could not be the champion, apparently, according to the uh, constitution. So the officers amended the recommendation that has been submitted to cabinet. So I'll quickly go through what the amendment now reads. It's delegate authority to the port portfolio holder for entertainment and leisure and assistant director of partnerships to oversee the associated work plan and report on an annual basis to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. I think that fulfills the champion function without breaching the constitution. So is everybody content with that? Thank you very much. Moving on. Item five, our responses to reports of the health and well-being. You're throwing your pen about, are you? <laughs> um, I don't think I have any items to report yeah, on that. Really happy with that. Item six, um, consideration of matters referred to the health and well-being scrutiny committees from cabinet or council. Um, we did have a discussion the other day and there are a couple of outstanding items around the provision of public toilets and um, support for councillors' well-being. Um, we haven't had a response as far as I know to that. So just to inform the committee that we will be chasing that up with cabinet and asking them to respond to both of those items in a positive way. Is everybody content with that? Item eight is, um, item seven is update on health related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. I'm so sorry, this is actually the five minutes. Okay. I'm very sorry, Chair. Um, just on the previous item, I'm aware that um, my colleague, Councillor Claymore, at the recent full council, um, had a question based on public toilets. And I just wondered if you wanted to add anything to that or just support what you said about going back to Cabinet. If I may, Chair. Um, yeah, we did, I did get an answer, but it wasn't a complete answer. And I've asked for a, a written response from Councillor Thompson um, as to... Um, when the toilets were out of use, when they knew that they were out of use and the other questions that I asked. So as soon as I get a response, I'll circulate it amongst the Health and Scrutiny Committee. That's very helpful, thank you. I mean, it, it's an important issue. Um, what you cannot do is to promote um, tourism as, as um, a staple for Tamworth if you don't have um, provision which enables people with children or older people to take part in that activity. And if you close the toilets, then you stop both of those things happening. So it's an important point. So I look forward to hearing the answer to all of that. Um, Councillor Dean. Thank you. Just going back to when this matter was um, first 
brought to the council, I think it was several years ago, and I presented a petition at that time, because one of our issues was the fact that it was so f the toilets were so few and far between. And when you're talking about a child who suddenly tells you they want to go to the toilet, you do not have time to go all the way across town to find a loo. So we, we were totally against the, the toilets being shut on Gungate. And, you know, the provision is very scarce. The, the, ca the castle grounds is a fabulous provision. But then when there's an event and three of them are out of use, that just beggars belief, really, that that wasn't... It can't be foreseen, but plumbing is easily fixed and it's quite sad that that wasn't able to be put in place before the event. Yeah, and, and we are trying to sell the castle grounds as a venue for um, events and you can't have that sort of thing happening. I quite agree. Right, thank you. Anything else on, on that matter? But thank you for raising it. Um, Item 7, update on health-related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. That would normally be reported by Councillor Thomas Jay, but unfortunately he's not, not here this evening. Is there anything we can say about it? No, um, obviously we, there were the digests as well yeah. with the agenda. So, yeah. so I think we'll have to defer a fuller report on that um, to the meeting in October, if if committee are content with that and I'm afraid I have a similar um, apology to make about item 8 sorry chair just going back to um, the last item on staffs county council would it be possible if um, if the representative is not able to attend that they could give us a, a written um, update on it We did actually request one, and we haven't had one, unfortunately. So I, I mean, he's probably been busy, um, and possibly his inability to attend um, was was fairly short notice. So perhaps he just didn't have time. But your your point is well made, and we did actually ask for one. Unfortunately, we haven't received it. Um, looking. Then to item eight, which is the um, closure of the George Bryan Centre. There appears to have been something of a miscommunication between ourselves and the um, Integrated Care Board. Uh, and they are not here tonight, as you can see. Um, so what I have asked is that there is a fuller consideration of this. Part of the reason um, that they're not here is that um, they're in Perda because of the by-election. And so if you raise um, what is a potentially controversial item during Perda, then I think that creates difficulties for you. And similarly, I was, we were going, weren't we, to ask for opinions from people, but actually that would actually make it a political issue. And I think it is something we will need to defer until after the by-election. Apologies, Chair. So, to clarify, is the political element because it would be the idea of um, who made the decisions, uh, parties involved that may lead on those kind of decisions and finances, which has a political Why? element. Is that the kind of the politics of it? Um, excuse my ignorance. Just I think when I hear politics, I think oh, the <laughs> national parties. Just in terms of, I've, we're thinking more in terms of the residents of Tamworth and what provision is available for them trying to keep parties out of it. Thank you. Yeah, I think this sort of provision is really important for the people who use it. And, and there, there were, there's actually only one option under consideration um, by um, the Partnership Trust. So there's only one option un under proper consideration. And I think the sort of debate you have when there's only one option on the table is by its very nature controversial. I mean, I have my own personal views, which I will not air today. You'll be pleased to hear about the process, um, which um, I think has left something to be desired over a period of time. Um, but I would welcome, I think, a much fuller debate. I'm, I am told 
that they're not going to be making decisions on this. And this is an indication of its controversy that they will unlikely to be making a decision on this until the integrated um, care board meets in December. Um, now, whether you, you, you accept that or you think the decision's already been made and they just don't want to tell you until December, I'll leave that to you. Um, but the formal position is they're preparing a business case on the single option item, which has, as I understand it, to be signed off by NHS England. And that will then be communicated to the board and from the board to us in December, is my understanding. I think the, the date wasn't exactly confirmed. Wasn't, but, but I think yes. It kind of, we're not expecting it before then. So. I, yeah, I don't think it'll happen before then. Um, and I think the, the business case, um, if you've ever dealt with an NHS England business case, um, it is an extremely complex process. And it has to demonstrate a number of things, including sustainability, both financial and clinical sustainability. It has to indicate both. So, I, you know, whilst I, I may sound sceptical and cynical, there are actually a number of steps you need to take to prepare a business case. Um, and those do take time. I don't really want to mention as well, we've obviously got a potential meeting as well with the ICD, you know, so we have to get a bit more clarification to sort of get in the diary, haven't we? Yes, we are, we are going to be talking directly with the Integrated Care Board um, before that. Because what I need to understand is why there's a single option on the table and which um, patient group it's aimed at and what about the carers and the families and those sorts of issues is what I want. Councillor Dean. Thanks, Chair. Um, I was under the impression that everything was a done deal. So are we saying now that there is still a very small slither of light that representations can be made and perhaps an alternative solution is found? I mean, it's, it's really quite difficult to say that. What, what they're saying is there's been a substantial in consultation and engagement exercise already. And if there are views, they should have been heard during that consultation process. And, and there is a point, and I'm playing devil's advocate here, there is a point um, that how much consultation is enough? Well, it depends who you talk to. And you, I could consult for the next 10 years on this and still not come up um, with a conclusive conclusion that would satisfy everybody. So at some point you have to say the engagement has finished. At some point you have to say that. Now, I don't know whether they've reached that point. It wasn't clear to me whether no. they have. And what I am clear about is they're preparing a business case based on an option, um, which is actually, the option um, is actually available on their website. The option they're considering is available on their website. And people may want to have a look at that in, in a little more detail. Um, some of the points I'm trying to clarify is what, is what the client group is for this. I don't think there's much more we can say no, on that, no, really. But we are sort of working to get it back to a, a meeting at a later meeting. Right, I think we need to, to have a, a greater understanding both of process and outcome and what it means for people. Because we did have a long discussion about transport arrangements for people. Um, and, and I had some, as you understood, some reservations about what is being proposed regarding transport. So those are the sorts of issues we'll pick up with the ICB um, when we meet with them. And, and I'm very happy, incidentally, um, for any councillor who does have specific questions about it to talk to me in private afterwards, and I will either take that question and see what answer I can get from it, or if I can answer it from what we know already, I will do that. Is there anything else we can say? No, I think, I think that's... So I apologise that it's not the full item that I hoped it would be today because this is the sort of issue you want to draw a line under at some point and get clarification but I don't think we're in a position to do that. So is everybody, well not content, but is everybody happy to move on? Thank you Chair. 
Um, yeah, I would just say how frustrating it is because I've been on the Health and Wellbeing Committee now and chaired the Health and Wellbeing Committee for some time and this um, this item has been pushed from pillar to post. So, mm -hmm. And I understand the reasons why we can't discuss it tonight. So, um, yes, doesn't stop me being frustrated though. If it's any consolation, you were mentioned honourably in dispatches during that conversation. <laughs> Councillor Dean. Um, are we going to be able to get them here then before the December deadline? I, I, um, I said to them that I would like a fuller discussion at the November board meet, at November committee meeting. Um, whether we will get that. Um, remains to be seen, but that was the request yeah. I made during our conversation. Was it yesterday or the day yeah. before? Um, we had the conversation with them, and I've asked for that fuller um, report because that will be after the by election, so there should be no incumbents. So, there. Okay, um, moving on uh, with again with my apologies for that um, to our forward plan. The forward plan has been circulated. Yeah. And we're, and we're proposing to add a couple of items um, to the forward plan, um, which have been around for a while. Sorry, Chair, we're we talking forward plan or our working plan? Forward, forward plan. plan. Okay. okay. Yeah. So there is um, a couple of items that we'd like to um, include within the forward plan. Um, the first is sheltered housing, community alarm and lifeline provision, which I think has been around for a bit. Um, and we'd like clarification. It went to cabinet. It, it's going to cabinet. It's going to cabinet. Right, okay. So going to Cabinet very shortly, and the second one is the um, homelessness statutory on-call and out-of-hour arrangements. Which again, is that going to Cabinet? Yeah, it is, so isn't it? It's yeah. going to Cabinet on the 30th. 30th. So we're asking for it to come after yeah. the meeting on the 28th. So we're asking for it to come to this committee before it goes to Cabinet, so we can have a discussion here. Are there any other items that people feel we should be requesting be included yep thank you very much moving on then to um we are getting through this agenda aren't we working group updates i'm not aware of any no um like i say just whether you want to say for the record just advice about the damping mold even though it's not your working group but yeah yes as as i've just been nudged i was actually advised before this meeting but i completely forgot <laughs> Um, to advise the committee that the damp and mould item, which I think we've discussed and to death really, is being picked, un picked up under the Housing Repairs Working Group, which is not a working group of this um, committee. But there are a number of our members who sit on that group. Um, and we can update the committee on the progress of that when it meets. I think it's been convened by Councillor Cook, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's from the Cook. Yeah. Okay, is that all right? And moving on then to the um, health and wellbeing scrutiny work plan. Again, it has been circulated. Um, how does it look to people? Are there any further items that need to be included or potentially excluded? So I've got it in front of me. Do people want to go through it item by item or are you, are you content to just look at it in the round? Councillor Daniels. Um, I am delighted, Chair, that we can see as one of the topics the damper mould in council housing um, with the TBC. I think we all agree that's a sooner rather than later item you know, what with winter coming. Yes, and there's been a, a, a number of recent um, cases where local authorities have been found to be negligent because they haven't dealt with damp and mould. So this is not just a well-being issue, it's also a legal issue. Councillor Dean. 
Um, I would. It's obviously, a rabbit's ear fits up under the worst of it. Whereas when it's sticking to paint, if you put the paint in, it's just going to go to the worst of it. So it's yes, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Sorry. Um, just the other one that says 2BC, the loneliness and isolation. I would like to see that come before the winter, really, which is the time when it's, it's most, you know, apparent. I mean, this is something that's been um, that's been around, well, certainly during the pandemic. So from March 2020, it's been a significant issue for a large number of people, and it's not something it's not something we can deal with directly, but we can engage with partners to deal with it, including voluntary sector partners. So it is something we should be dealing with. Sorry, is it possible then that we could have an update sooner rather than later on what we do do and who we engage with to, to see, you know, how far we are going and if there's anything else we should be doing? It's coming to the 28th of November meeting, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah, if she's going to bring it alongside the wellbeing, she's it's a significant part of well-being, so it should be part of it. Are there any items um, that councillors are aware of that we would benefit from including within the work plan, or the people of Tamworth would benefit? So are we content at this point? To, um, to endorse the work plan as it currently stands. It, it is iterative, it will change as we go along and things emerge. Councillor Dean. Again, um, we've got down a working group that we have, attainment and skills in Tamworth. Is that something that's actually still ongoing or is it something we need to give a kick to to see where we are with it? Very far away from if you want to do Would you mind kicking Councillor Daniels while you're here? <laughs> is, is there any update from that? Go on then. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I don't know if it comes under the remit of this, but as obviously attainment has been, I'd like to say, right in all the senses in Tamworth, at full council a question was asked regarding uniform and the cost of school uniform and we were reminded of the excellent work many councillors were involved with with having kind of the store where people could come along and kind of do the swap shop of it um, in my capacity as working in education i know lots of the reasons why there is a uniform not least safeguarding in the first instance um, so i don't know whether that would be something that comes here potentially as well as kind of just a cabinet when it was raised up there because um, knowing some of the local schools, there's work that they do to really encourage the families of those students to come and get it for free. Maybe just kind of information that we discuss or I can collate or goes out so people are aware. Is there anything that would fall under this committee or is it for elsewhere, do you think? Thank you. I mean, that's a good question. I, I actually don't know the answer to that. Maybe it's something that scrutiny chairs should get together and talk about. Yeah, we've got a meeting of scrutiny chairs coming up very shortly and we'll see because I think that does need to be picked up. Can we make sure it is? Yeah, and I think that's where this most open document of what, what we want, who we yeah. want to speak to. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you for that. Are there any other items that, that we should be considering within this document? Are we content then that it reflects what we need to be doing? I'll update, to, um, I'll update all the changes and then put them on and circulate and mm. update the, the, the forward plan items yeah. on as well. Yep, yeah, we will um, we will circulate an updated version of the work plan with the amendments that have been agreed just now. Okay, is there any other Business. There's nothing else. No. Any other business councillors? In that case, um, can I thank you for your attendance and your input? And I've got it done by half past six. <laughs> thank you very much.